So these are the people that are on the. Oh, it's nobody's on. Nobody's on. Oh, okay. But if anybody's watching, then they can't speak to us. Can you? No, 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 nobody has a Zoom link. Right, nobody has a Zoom link. Okay. So we, we shouldn't have any Zoom participants talking. So where do I, um... No, 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 it's better for me to present to you down here. I can probably just use this and I don't have to bother. Because what I need what I need is on the website. Pull the phone drive the website up. It'll, it can stay on the computer. Miss Miss Bailey, do you have a list of all the members to do the roll call? Top of the agenda. Yeah, it's on the top of the agenda. The agenda. Um, yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, it was a. Uh, okay. Let me make copies right quick. Calendar invite. Rob. Rob. Yes. He already has some printed. All right. Test, test. Frida's the mics on. Frida, got no. She said my we're live. It's six thirty already. I'll wait a few minutes. Charlotte, would you need to sit up here to be on the mic just to make the roll call? Are you fine? Yeah, yeah okay, come on. Huh? Great. Don't, don't just not a, as a matter of fact, I'm going silent. That's what I can hear now. Rita, when will you turn the mics on? So we can just test them. When will the mics be turned on? Are they on? I mute them. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll be starting in approximately Three minutes. We'll start at six thirty-five. Let everybody get settled and get in a little bit. When you, is that when you're gonna?
Okay, Frida, are we uh, ready to begin? Good evening, citizens, and thank you for joining us as I welcome you, our committee members and staff. I call this joint Stonecrest Floss Advisory and Finance Oversight Committee meetings meeting to order on Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022 at 6.35 p.m. Madam Deputy City Clerk, would you please do the roll call first for the Splas Advisory Committee? Councilman Rob Turner. Here. Councilwoman Tammy Grimes. Here. Harry Karakaran. Here. Elijah Ajayi. Here. Donna Priest Brown. Daryl Taylor. Jessica Fields, Lemuel Hawkins, Jeff Martin, Verna Richelieu, Stephanie Shine, Is that it? Yes, sir. Thank you. We do not have a quorum for the Splice Advisory Committee. Would you please do the roll call now for the Finance Oversight Committee? Yes, sir. Councilwoman Tammy Grimes. Mayor Jasmine Cobble. Angela Ash. Nadia Farnham. Mayor Pro Tem George Turner. Here. Dave Marcus. Michael Strong. Here. And Lakeisha Swanson. Here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. All right, we'll move on. We uh, did we have a can we we have um, six present for both or just the one? no just for finance. So did we do have a quorum for the finance committee? My committee, great, fantastic, thank you. All right, uh, we'll continue on with our meeting. Uh, first of all, let's have a word of prayer for invocation. If you would please stand. <coughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your presence honoring, blessing, and exalting your holy name and you only as the only true and living God. Thank you for your mercy and grace toward us. We invite you to be in charge of this meeting tonight as we decrease and you increase as your precious Holy Spirit empowers us with your wisdom, insight, discernment, direction, and understanding as we govern those through these committees. Let our actions and interactions bless you, Father, and the citizens of Stonecrest. Thank you for giving us opportunity to serve you by serving others. Be blessed with the labor of our hands and let all that we do give you glory for your plan for Stonecrest is perfect. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Uh, let us all look at the agenda and uh, see if there's any changes, alterations, or anything we need to do before we vote for approval. I will make one change in reference to uh, the, the new business. The FY23 budget recommendations will come before the mid-year FY22 budget review. Uh, and we'll also, having presenting that FY budget, the 22 budget review will be uh, Mayor Jasmine Cobble. Any other changes, alterations to the agenda? Okay, if not, the floor is now open for a motion to approve the agenda. Can I get a motion? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? All in, in favor will signify by saying aye. All opposed will signify by saying nay. Madam Secretary, would you do the roll call, please? For the agenda.
Councilman Rob Turner. Yay. Councilwoman Tammy Grind. Harry. Excuse me. Elijah Ajay. Yay. Donna Priest Brown. Daryl Taylor. Councilman George Turner. Aye. <clears throat> Michael Strong. Lakeisha Swanson. Councilwoman Tammy Grimes. Mayor Cobble. Nadia Farnham. Aye. Thank you, madam. Uh, the agenda has been approved. Now, uh, next on the agenda will be public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening? We have none from the city clerk. Thank you, ma'am. All right, next on the agenda will be new business. First, we'll make a presentation will be a FY23 budget recommendations by our city engineer, Mr. Harry Karakari. Good evening, uh, Plast and Finance Advisory Committee. Um, uh, what I have is a presentation, and uh, there is a recommendation at the end uh, uh, from uh, from the staff for the committee to consider uh, for some of the projects. And um, just to give you an update here uh, on our projects, we received the bids uh, first time on the street paving on uh, April 25th. And uh, we rebid that because we only received uh, one bid. And uh, we opened the bid on June 16th, 2022. And uh, we received two bids. And uh, we're hoping we can make a recommendation to the council to get it approved. And we will be making recommendations to the council with the winning uh, bid. Um, luckily, we got two bids this time. So um, I think we are on for paving in 2022. And um, well, by evaluating that those are reasonable bids, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can, we're gonna make a recommendation to the council. Thank you. And uh, Panola Road uh, study is the second large project we are working on. And uh, the Cap County Commission approved the agenda on April 25th. And uh, the traffic counts has been completed. Uh, we have made, uh, we have the kickoff meeting, uh, joint kickoff meeting between City of Stonecrest and uh, DeKalb County was held on June 13, 2022. And uh, we are going to be analyzing uh, several intersections, uh, possibly roundabouts, and also improvements for sidewalks and multi-use paths. And also we'll be looking at the capacity of the street. And uh, we will be continuing to giving updates every time we receive more information from the consultant. And freight cluster studies in the same stage, we have not received any update from ARC. Uh, what I heard from them is that they are still trying to um, execute the agreement between GDOT and the ARC. And uh, we are still working on the master plans for two new parks which are new botanical garden at Farrington Parkway and the new Miller Grove Park. We have completed the scope of work for that and then we are looking to work with our finance department to release the RFQs for both of them. As we have not made any progress on that existing park master plan for Farrington Park master plan. Once we release the new park RF RFQs, we will work on that um, existing park and we'll, we'll bring it back to uh, the committee. And the bicycle pedestrian trail plan, uh, we have completed a scope of work for that. And then it is with the uh, purchasing department and they are working on to be releasing uh, the RFQ, RFQ for that uh, plan study also. And then we're working on multiple uh, short term projects, which are going to be uh, supposed to be implemented from 2020 to 2024. Um, again, giving back, giving some updates on these small uh, short-term projects. The bus, bus stop enhancements was completed in 2021 and uh, freight cluster study ordinance uh, traffic study that will come out of that 
red cluster study and then once that uh, report is complete uh, we'll bring the ordinance to the council city council for um, approval and um, I just gave you an update on the Panola Road, Panola Road study county is managing the project uh, with uh, assistance from the city and these are the three sidewalks that we are proposing to do this year and um, um, sorry going back to uh, other sidewalk projects Browns Mill Elementary sidewalk was completed as part of the roundabout and um, this, the one we are proposing this year is Browns Mill Road sidewalk from Evans Mill Road to Arabia Mountain Path and then we received the survey proposal and it is with purchasing department for them to approve it so that we can go ahead and start the survey work same thing about this Covington Highway sidewalk this is from Miller Road to uh, Thicket Way we received the survey proposal and we are waiting for purchasing department to review and approve it so that we can go ahead and start the survey work and then the engineering design for these two sidewalks will follow after the survey work is completed and this is to give you the map of where this Browns Mill Road, road sidewalk is this is from Evans Mill Road to where this uh, Arabia Mountain path is so this is the connection of existing sidewalk from from the intersection to the Arabia Mountain um, path so we'll have a connection for all these um, subdivisions and then the new subdivision is being developed on this um, northwest corner the second one is the Covington highway sidewalk this is from the Miller Road intersection all the way to the sidewalk existing sidewalk here there. so this is a missing connection that we are proposing to do this year third one is the small sidewalk you can see the existing sidewalk here and existing sidewalk here there's a section missing uh, this was um, in the transportation master plan to be considered and the next project that we brought up to the to the uh, SPLOS committee in the last uh, meeting is the, to consider uh, Miller Road Thompson Mill Road intersection um, um, there is a uh, we have an accident data on this and then uh, we are recommending to go ahead and uh, do some additional study and uh, consider options um, currently it has a four-way stop with the red flashing light uh, but uh, the accidents continue to happen and then we wanted to study a little more and and then consider all the options and then bring it back to the committees and the council for consideration um, the two options we may be looking at is one is a four-way signal or a roundabout so the study will tell us which one is the best option for this intersection at that time uh, we'll bring it to the council and uh, the new item that I wanted to bring it to the committees this tonight is about the Salem Park uh, Salem Park is located at uh, 5290 Salem Road you can see the blue dark blue line that is our property and uh, you can see uh, the walkway around that open field and our parking here and these are the two play area and then that is our um, pavilion here so the blow up is going to tell you what we are looking to do at Salem Park um, you can see these two red boxes that this is where our play equipments were um, these were removed in 2019 because of the unsafe conditions um, and also you can see that red circle there um, that is a nice pavilion um, the roof structure is completely made of nice um, heavy wood uh, the roof has failed you can see that circle that I don't know whether anybody can see that damage on this roof and also you can see that for such a large park here we have the basketball court walking path in the back we have only very limited parking here um, so what we are proposing at this time for the community to consider is we want to remove the uh, replace the pavilion roof um, the reason is that um, it is the roof has been leaking for a long time that nice wooden structure of the the wood roof structure we don't want that to be damaged because if we let that get damaged we may end up replacing the entire roof structure not just the shingles on top and also we are looking uh, proposing to do a expansion of the parking lot 
and then we would like to uh, reinstall it, install all the play equipment we removed because of the unsafe condition in 2019. Um, the park go was here now. Um, you know, they're going there, but there's no place for the children to play. And, um, you know, we removed it because it is unsafe. Uh, we need to put it back so that uh, the park goers can use it. And also we are looking to do some exercise equipment installation in around this, uh, the walking path area so that the, the, the youth uh, who goes to the park has, um, you know, something to do there other than the, just the basketball court we have there. The basketball court, only there is, uh, there is only one court, even though it has uh, enough area for two court, but that is the only activity they can do at this point. Um, and then also, we wanted to resurface the walking path at some point. We are not proposing to do it at this point, uh, but we have to consider that at some point in the future. And also, uh, we are proposing at some point to do additional um, trails in the wooded area. So you can see this. Th this entire area, <coughs> excuse me, is within our park. Uh, you know, it, it could, we could really uh, thin down and uh, do some nice trails there so that it, we can increase the, the, the length of trails um, for this park. Also, we have this wooded section area here. Uh, we are proposing at some point we need to consider thinning that down and uh, consider, you know, building some trails here so that um, this park becomes a good park for the neighborhood. We have uh, in the north, north and east section, we have a considerable amount of residential area in this uh, around the park and also school children, um, you, know, um, you know, can use that at some point. Uh, you know, they could uh, be spending time until the, the, they are picked up by the parents uh, if we make this park more valuable. And then you can see that uh, what we are proposing is to go ahead and add parking in this area so that we can actually triple the number of parking so that um, the, the park goers don't have to park across the school and then walk across this um, traffic road to use the park. Um, so those are the ones we, have, we are thinking for this. Um, at this point, what we are recommending is design and construct Browns Mill Road sidewalk. BP4, design and construct Covington Highway sidewalk, BP17, and construct Evan Mills Board sidewalk, Evans Mill Road sidewalk, which doesn't need a design because it's a small section. And also, um, we're recommending to study Miller Road, Thompson Road, Thompson Mill Road intersection, uh, replace the Salem Park pavilion roof, reinstall Salem Park play equipment, and design Salem Park additional parking and once that design is completed, we'll bring back to the committees and the council for construction uh, and go and do the construction of this thing. So that is the staff recommendation at this point. And then um, our goal for the short term, 2022-2024, from the transportation master uh, plan update is to complete construction of sidewalks on the short term project list begin design of midterm projects, thereby creating shovel-ready projects because every time we go after the grants, it could be the federal grant or state grant, they ask us whether the, does the city has any shovel-ready projects. We want to create some shovel-ready projects so that we can go after the grants. And also our goal is to seek grant opportunities for construction of midterm projects and then prepare for SPLOS two. What that means is that we wanted to have uh, several shovel-ready projects so that uh, when the SPLOS 2 uh, presentation comes in, we can make presentation to the public that we are ready to do these kind of projects. So that is my presentation. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions the, the committee members may have. Yes, ma'am. Councilwoman Grimes. Not so far, but uh, we can. Yes, we can. We can definitely do that. That's that is a very nice structure. Um, you know, the the it's very nicely done. Yes. Um, so there are there are requests from 
several residents around there to move this basketball court away from the children's play area because uh, the youth who are using this uh, sometimes um, they sometimes they don't know what uh, what to say around the children so um, so that is something um, you know we need to be considering and then when we do that that is a very good area to put another pavilion there and then the basketball court will probably we will we will do this in this area here and move it away from the the the, the, the young uh, small children's play area with the mothers watching them and then I think the basketball court is not the it's too close to this these two play areas There are two two requests came in uh, recently. One of them is to move this basketball away from the children play area, uh, increase the number of parkings. Those are the two came in, and then uh, you know with this land available, and then um, you know if we look at this um, north and east uh, area, there there's a lot of residential areas there. And then we could, if we expand the trail in this area, we could actually have a connection from that cul-de-sac there, people to come through the backside and use that as a walking trail in addition to uh, the additional pavilion and additional parking area. And then this, this could be a very nice park for the, 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 if we do all these things, it would be a very, very nice park for the residents. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm sorry, thank you. Were there any consideration for a putting green? Um, just thinking about it holistically, typically if there's some type of putting green in between the basketball court and the kids, it adds another layer of safety because typically adults are using the putting green. Um, don't wanna compare, but Henry County has a lot of those in some of their parks. It's just a little small area probably from I don't know, probably 30, 40 feet. You have to bring your own clubs, you have to bring your own balls. And it's just a little putting green and it adds another layer of safety because you have adults out there playing golf, putting. Just a thought. That's up to the council. You know, I mean, we, we, we're staff, we take direction from the, the council and then we, we work on it. Yeah. That was a good thought, Mr. Phillips. Appreciate you. Thank you. <clears throat> I have. I'm sorry, Mr. Till. I'm sorry. I have a, a just a question. Well, just a few quick questions. Um, shovel ready projects. It's help. Uh, uh, help me understand a shovel ready project. Shovel ready projects means that you are months away from beginning the construction. That means that you have completed the the survey work. You have completed the design, and you have the. Um, construction documents ready to go. Uh, that means uh, you are looking for a contractor to start work within within six months. Got it, okay. So the second question in terms of sidewalks, I would like to propose that, um, and this probably won't happen until SWAS 2, um, because I know you have short-term projects and mid-term projects, so a long-term project wouldn't go with SWAS 1, correct? Because of the, the the midterm projects would even go into the SPLOSC one. Actually, it has to be this in the SPLOSC two. The long term would go with SPLOSC two? Definitely. 
Okay, because yeah. I'm, I'm proposing in terms of, and I don't know if it's in the transportation plan, I need to go back and look at it, um, Farrington, not Farrington, is Farrington Parkway, uh, Walmart, Farrington Parkway, right. Um, the site, you know, to um, install sidewalks, not on the side of 20, but on the, across the street there, going all the way down, almost crossing over 20 in the splots too. So I guess we could talk about that at one of our meetings. So hopefully we could put that as a placeholder uh, for splots too, long term. Yes, it's a, if it is a state highway, we have to get approval from the state. Um, this is basically, I'm just bringing up only the short-term sidewalk projects. Okay. There's, there's a lot of uh, mid-term sidewalk projects. And, um, you know, those probably, um, we will not be able to do those using this plus uh, one money. And also, um, I, I, as I previously mentioned, that we have an RFQ coming out. Um, it should be released very soon. Um, it's with purchasing department. Um, it is called uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Trail Plan for the entire city. So that will be our master plan for the city uh, for the next 25 years, which is going to say, it's going to identify all the existing sidewalks in the entire, within the city limits. Identify all the bike lanes we already have. Identify all the trails uh, we have. And then also, it is going to give us the gap sidewalks that we need to fill, and then the future sidewalks, new sidewalks that we need to build, we recommend to build. Also, the multi-use path we're going to build. So um, the reason I want, we wanted to do that now is that uh, when we go after any future grants, the first question they ask is that, is that from a city council adopted master plan? That's the reason we wanted to go after this. We wanted to go and do this master plan and get that council adopted, um, which is definitely going to have to have uh, the public input elements to any master plan because they, when the grant um, funders or providers look for this public input element, and then this, this master plan is going to have multiple um, public meetings and, um, and then get the input from the public and uh, uh, prioritize that and it's going to go into the master plan. So we definitely will be looking for um, a sidewalk network for the entire city. One other thing to Harry. I know at the last meeting um, I had asked about the uh, uh, P12, and just as an FYI, I don't know if you knew, um, they are paving um, from Rockdale County line up to the turnaround on P12 and hopefully to the end of intersect with 155. So I just, I don't know if this is for the council, I'm just wanting to know, how do you guys know the GDOT schedule for road pavement or, or projects? So GDOT, uh, we can always ask them to provide the, the information, and then we can, we can find out what is their plan, where they're gonna cross the, the county line and come into DeKalb County or Stormford. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, let me also chime in on the question that was raised about the Farrington Road. Uh, perhaps this should have been a uh, three-way committee meeting with the Transportation Committee in on it because we did talk about making sure we keep those projects in front of the public. There is a GDOT project to uh, rework Farrington Road because there have been several fatalities on Farrington uh, from that Walmart area going uh, east along I-20, where it crosses I-20 and, and intersects with Hillendale. Uh, that bridge is going to be uh, demolished and realigned to uh, match uh, Medical Parkway. Uh, the exact date on that is something we need to get before the public, and we need to follow up on it, because I think it's fairly soon on the agenda, and with GDOT, fairly soon means within the next three to four years. Uh, but um, we did discuss that as a local project, and it was made clear that that is not local, that is state, and uh, the little we can do about it uh, without the state getting involved. But we can get that schedule and keep that schedule in front of the public 
And if it slips any, we can deal with GDOT. And it was also pointed out that we need to bring uh, the GDOT uh, director to the table such that we can have a regular dialogue with them. Uh, they should be at our, um, uh, it should be available to us. So we need to make that happen for the Transportation Committee, for SPLOS, and for uh, other uh, activities of the city that um, they can bring us up to date on what's happening with the bridge at I-20, Miller Road, um, the uh, intersection that with that realignment, and any other work happening within the limits of Stonecrest. And let me also uh, mention that I had some of the same concerns about 212. Uh, you mentioned sidewalk improvements at uh, Browns Mill ES. Was that uh, elementary school, the ES? Yes, elementary school. That was the one completed uh, um, in, with the roundabout part. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, but that being a state highway, how does that play in with uh, sidewalks? Is the state involved in getting sidewalks along the state highways? Or is that going to just be purely uh, or strictly local? The same thing would apply to Coverton Highway, as that is a state highway as well. And we speak of doing sidewalks on Coverton. So that is a question I have. What role will the state play in uh, assisting with the sidewalks in those locations? Because if the state would do it, that would leave us funding to do other things. Yes, both the state highways, but those are in our master plan. The state will limit their involvement in issuing an encroachment permit for us. So they will basically um, ask us to fill out an encroachment permit form and submit the drawings and everything to them. They will review it, make comments, and issue a permit for us to build it. That's, that's the, um, unfortunately, um, state, that's what they do. Um, you know, I have done several in other cities in the state highways. So anything you do, you had to get their encroachment permit. And then that's that's the only thing they're going to do. We're going to they're going to they're going to make the local governments to design and construct sidewalks in the state highway. Okay, and I suggest we're going to encourage our mayor and city council to establish a relationship with GDOT uh, director, and we can have a more active involvement with them. Excellent idea. I like that. Oh, Tim. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes. Um, I have a suggestion regarding the uh, Salem Park. Um, in regards to the basketball courts, um, if we're going to relocate, I think the Atlanta Hawks Foundation has a grant in terms of helping building basketball courts. So if there's something that I can do to try to help, you know, research it, I don't mind helping you with that. Well, we, we welcome that because we could use that money to do something else uh, for that park, yes. Uh, that could be the, the money for the pavilion if we can get them to do uh, a basketball court. Yeah. Good point, thank you. Any other questions? Well, Harry, I want you to go back, if you would, to the uh, slide on Miller Road and Thompson Mill Road with the roundabout. Um, that has been always a concern for me for the last several years. I've been getting a lot of reports and questions concerning putting a traffic light up there because there's been several accidents, including some 18-wheelers. So that's, that's a very near and dear intersection for me. I guess my question is, why is it that we're looking at a roundabout instead of having a traffic light, and what makes the roundabout safer than having a traffic light? I'm just curious. I told you we're not going to ask that question anyway. Thank you. So <laughs> You told me not to ask that question? I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, th there are, you know, there are pros and cons uh, roundabout versus um, signal. Um, the roundabouts have, I would say, almost zero maintenance cost for, for us, for the cities. That is the reason uh, most of the cities are going away from the signals and going to the roundabout. So in case um, in the roundabouts in the middle circle, we ended up uh, making some landscape, that would be the maintenance of the landscape would be the only cost we're going to have. Other than that, there is no cost. Um, you know, there are height restrictions, what you can plant in those islands, uh, because uh, the, 
the cost coming on all four directions should be able to see the cost coming in all three other directions. So the height is restricted. So you're not talking about trees, you're talking about shrubs. And then, you know, if there is some seasonal flowers or something, you're gonna plant and replant, that's it. And uh, the site, the roundabout, um, there, are, there are several types of accidents happen in the intersections. Uh, the T-boning is one, and then uh, head-on um, is other one. The third one is a side swipe. So the only chance of accidents happening in the roundabout is a side swipe uh, because those have the, the, the property damage and then the, the fatality are much lower in uh, side swipe accidents than compared to the T-boning and, uh, and uh, head-on uh, uh, pol collisions. And uh, also the rear ending is also pretty much no rear ending in, uh, when it comes to a roundabout versus a stop sign or um, a signal. Um, I, I looked at the traffic data for this one, uh, which is a little old, 2018, so we had three more years of, if, uh, if the committee recommends to the council and if the council approve this project, we'll be collecting um, additional three years worth of data, which is 19, 20, and 21, and some partial 22. Uh, most of the accidents are here rear ending. What's happening is that the people coming in all four directions, they're coming there, and all of a sudden there is a red flashing light there, and they're slamming the brakes. Um, you know, uh, when you have a signal, you can see it really, you know, farther away, but when you have this flashing light, you don't see it. You come and you see it slam the brake and somebody behind you is just rear-ending. That's happening a lot here. I'm sorry. Yes, there are substines too, but I think there's, there's no light, okay. So that's, that's happening a lot here. And also, um, there are um, T-boning also happening. I think what is happening is that uh, the, the one, one direction of traffic comes in and they think they were there before than the other one. And the other one is thinking that they were there before. And then when they take the left turn, um, you know, there's, there's uh, T-boning accidents happening. So roundabout, you can avoid uh, both of them. On the signals, there's a lot of maintenance cost. Um, you have to upgrade the signal equipment, the cabinets, and also the bulbs, and then, you know, these uh, federal highway standard changes, you gotta up upgrade the signals. And uh, when, when lightning hits this cabinet, that's where the biggest issue is that. Uh, when the lightning hits and knock out the whole entire signal, it is very difficult to train people to act as a four-way stop. Um, you know, people come in and then they try to, you know, try to think that there, there was a signal and then they don't get used to this. There's no signal anymore. So that creates some um, accidents also. Uh, the maintenance cost, um, and uh, when it not get knocked out by lightning, uh, and then you know you had to um, you had to send the people to put temporary stop signs and make everybody stop and go, and uh, that's that's those are the 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 issues between signal and then the roundabout. I appreciate that, and I do understand about maintenance costs and trying to be very fiscally sound, but of course safety is the foremost important thing for me in reference to these corners and these traffic lights. Uh, but there will be some additional costs in reference. There is a poll there. I don't know if, if Georgia Power, somebody put a poll there. So there will be an extensive cost with construction and uh, development. Am I correct in reference to putting the roundabout there? And is that the direction we're looking in now instead of having traffic lights in some of these communities, roundabouts? Are we finding them to really be that effective and efficient when it comes to safety? Yes, so there is a, uh, you know, just outside of this circle, there is a larger uh, transmission line power pole there. And then there is, there are two, if I, if I remember correctly, there are two poles in this location. And there is one pole here, and then there may be two here. Uh, the smaller poles um, could be easily uh, relocated and moved. Uh, but you know, at any cost, we want to avoid this the pole, the the larger transmission pole at the northwest corner because that's if we try to move that, that's going to cost a lot of money. So, um, the, luckily, if you look at this this dark lines there, those are the right of way lines. So we have about a hundred foot of right of way here. Um, you know, this is going to be a single lane roundabout if that is what the study is going to recommend. 
is not going to be a double uh, way roundabout. Uh, you know, we have two roundabouts already in the city. So the, which this would be like a smaller one, not the large one like we have on the, at the Brown Center. One final point, and I'm glad you mentioned that that'll be a smaller one. So what we have to, I'm pretty sure we'd have to start then redirecting traffic in reference to 18 wheelers and different people going over to the Snapfinger Woods uh, Industrial Park and different businesses over in that area. So we're looking at doing things like this. So those would be considerations too, am I correct? That's correct. So even though this is a smaller roundabout, we will still consider, uh, you know, um, accidental 18 wheelers coming through here. You know, I mean, they, you know, we can put all the rules that we want, but somebody will sneak through and then try to come. And uh, we want to make sure the radius will work for even larger vehicles when we design this. Thank you. I do want us to discuss that a little bit more in our SPLAS uh, committee meetings because I'm not really sold on that. I really not. I'm, I, maybe I'm old school. I like for a, a, a corner to tell me what to do, stop, pause, or go, instead of trying to figure out this person going to come this way, this person going to come that way. And so I'm just, I, I'm just concerned about the safety aspect. I know what issues have been, their concerns. That, and even in that instance, when you're talking about a flashing red light, I see the same type of mindset when it comes to uh, a roundabout to a certain degree because people are waiting. Am I, is this a, am I supposed to yield here? Am I supposed to continue to go? Do I turn right here? Whatever. Those kind of confusing kind of things. Now, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. Everybody else is traffic literate. But I, I want to make sure that the, the, the older community, or the, our seniors are safe in reference to uh, driving in this instance. So again, we'll talk more about it, but I, I appreciate that. I just wonder why you chose or why you recommend it, let me put it that way a roundabout instead of a traffic light, because that's what, we've been, that's what I've been asking for for the last three to four years. Councilmember, I did not recommend anything here. I, I don't want to recommend anything at this point. I'm just giving you both options that, you know, I cannot recommend anything. It need to come from a transportation. Well, you know, I would like to get your recommendation since you are an engineer in reference to what we're doing and where we're going. Uh, not that we would take it or I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I would like to get your opinions on it and what you think. That's why I was asking you about the safety and the economic components of it. That's pretty much it, though. I will be able to make a recommendation once the entire traffic data is collected and then the tra traffic engineer study this, we will be able to make a recommendation. At this point, we just have two options. That's all. Madam Mayor? I think Harry kind of just made that last point. I think the study is what's being recommended to approve for the SPLOS budget, and the study will dictate what is the best um, traffic improvement device for that intersection. I think Harry was just kind of going over what are the basic two. It's either a stoplight, a red flashing light, or a roundabout. But the study will dictate what's the best solution for that area. Okay, so what would we do then, I guess, with the studies we've done would be the traffic light. Just kind of consider those or compare those two and just go from there pretty much, would you say? We've had a study for traffic light there? That's what I've been told, that we've been studying that for three years, traffic studies in reference to having the light. The city? We the county. The county. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Now, you know, that's an interesting point. That point was not made, and I'm glad that point was brought up. That's a very important point. Thank you. Next time, speak into the mic so everybody could hear. If I could chime in on that, at the end of this week, we'll be in Savannah with five, over 500 other cities who are experiencing some of the same uh, concerns. A lot of them are shifting to roundabouts. We can uh, kind of pick their brains for their experience on going from traffic signals to roundabouts and the success or lack thereof, if uh, that is the case. I just want to add, um, too, in Henry County, our neighboring county, is if you go, I don't remember which road it is, but they have a lot of roundabouts in Henry County. So, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm just a Flintstone. I'm trying to be a Jets, and I'll, I'll get there. I promise you I will. I'll get there. Any other questions? Thanks, Harry. I appreciate you. Any other questions? 
If not, Harry, thank you so much for your presentation. I appreciate you. Now we'll have our mid-year FY22 budget review by our Mayor Jasmine Cobble. If we can, if we can stay with the, um, you can keep the SPAST, um presentation up for just a second. Pretty, can you take it back to the presentation? Because some of, um, some of what we need um, out of this meeting will dic will will need to be um, will dictate the some of the recommendation for 23. I don't want to leave from it just yet. Uh, Harry, if you'll go in through your slide deck, I'll show you. Uh, back, back, back. Start right there. Okay. Um, so, to, to wrap up 23 recommendations um, for capital projects. What we're looking for is um, guidance and recommendation for what needs to be funded going forward for the rest of 22. And then what are we looking to fund in preparation for 23? So I think, Harry, some of your presentation separates 22 from 23, but I wanted to do an overview real quick so we can distinguish what's left to be funded in 22 and uh, what is to be funded in 23 for capital projects for SPLOS. Um, so, Harry, if you'll toggle to the internet where we have the SPLOS budget report. Right there. So, real quick, this is the May year-to-date report. Um, there's a balance of $15 million and some change in the SPLOS budget and we are still yet to receive another six to seven million this year in SPLOS. Um, so even if we were to account for the, let's say eight to 10 million-ish in repaving that is on the table here shortly, it'll still leave quite a balance in the SPLOS budget. We, we need to spend that down significantly. Um, so the there's room to add projects to, to fund projects, rather, for the rest of 22, and then begin to plan for what we want to fund in the budget for 23. Um, so we need to talk through a little bit about what do we anticipate the year 22 list um, taking up, and then if we need to meet again and talk about what else we can add to that list. But that'll that'll leave. Let's say so. There's 15 now plus seven, what 22? Take eight to ten away from that. That still leaves us another 11 to 12 million in SPLOS before we even get to next year's SPLOS deposit. So we really need to we need some recommendations from the SPLOS committee on capital projects. Spend down that roughly 11 million as much as we can, or fund. The projects, of course, they won't be completed, but fund it uh, in 22 as best we can to spend that down. So let's let's go back to your presentation. This, this is what we are recommending today. Um, the we have the design and uh, design of these two and construction. Um, until we complete the design on these two, we will not know um, the co construction cost is. And then this one, um, you know, even at the higher end, these three will not cost only um, less than half a million dollars on the first three here. And then this study would probably, uh, we weigh under $50,000, the, the Miller or intersection study. And then we have received uh, some um, for, for Roof replacement, and then we're going to get, uh, you know, we, we have a quote for the metal roof. We are looking for the asphalt shingles also at this time. We would one more quote, and then we'll bring that to the council. And also, uh, the play equipment, we haven't done anything on that. We wanted to get some quotes on that. Um, this will probably cost around one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars for this um, reinstallation of the full blown um, cost. And then that we wanted to do the design of this. It's going to be probably um, around hundred thousand dollars to do the design, 
and then um, you know if the design is completed within months we want to bring the construction cost to the uh, finance and cost committee also talk about that so um, these are the projects we are recommending for the SPLOST committee and the finance committee to con consider and uh, make a recommendation to the city council so that we can move on with this and then spend money on these. Um, additionally, we can continue to work on the sidewalks this year. And uh, the paving itself is, I think, um, it's probably around $11 million. And uh, we are still looking at it, and we'll, we'll bring it to the council. That, and it, at that point, the council has an option to want to add the additional roads using the same rate, or we just wanted to rebid the additional roads next year. Can I ask a question, Steve? Yes. Um, so in regards to, again, the number of roads to be paved, I, I counted about 200. Harry, based on the report you gave me two weeks ago, you have phase bid one, bid two, bid two, bid three. Is it, It's 200 roads to be paved. So are you saying that by the end of 2022, all of those roads will be paved? That is correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And then again, I go back again to this simple question. In terms of this master list of roads on the master list, since 2019 through 2020, year to date, um, the percentage of roads that have been paved, exception to date or year to date. So, but if you're saying that at the end of 2020, two, all of the roads will be paved, that's reassuring. It makes me feel good. On that list, yes, the, the list I emailed you today, the, the, right. the all the list. Yeah, that's up to the council to decide whether they want to add additional roads or not. Yeah, right. and then we'll be at PCI of um, thirty. I think we're at thirty-seven point five now. Thirty-seven point five. That's correct. So by the end of this year, we'll be. I know we won't be at sixty because that's a perfect world sixty, but we'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of forty-ish. Some of the, the the average overall PCI once those streets are repaved. Right. We have to do that calculation again, but we probably won't be near there. Okay. That list is only getting us to the streets that are up to 37, which mathematically probably has to get at least to the streets that are up to 40, 45 to see overall average PCI. Okay. Still a small percentage. Between 19 and 21, it's still a small percentage of the road, of the all the roads in the city. But yeah, I don't. I don't think that we would be at that number just for this group of. Okay. I think it would take us a little bit of more, another another couple hundred to average that total score out to be near what we want. That's correct. Yes. So I did that without even looking. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm. And it needs to be on the. It's not on the um, website, Harry. Uh, what you shared with me. Uh, yes, this yeah. is this is the three list, uh, four list I emailed you today. So right. this is the 2019 streets we paved. Right, I saw that, yes. So I just brought this up to show you what we will be doing. So once these are paved, we will be adding these PCI numbers. These are usually, once it is paved, it goes from 90, 95 to 98. And then once we insert all these numbers, the software has to run it one more time to give us a new average PCI for the entire city. Um, we, you know, we, we have a proposal now uh, from a company that they will come and do another evaluation for the entire city. And then once they do that, we'll have a um, new PCI number. So this is the list 2019, 20, and 21. And I also have a 2022 um, list of streets that that it's in the bid now right um so you can see that um, the current pci starting this year from 20.6 that's the, the lowest pci we are starting to pay this year and then going all the way to um 37 37.5 and just one last thing a question i you had mentioned at one of the meetings, I don't know if it was a city, if it was a city council meeting, about the uh, 
grow is being analyzed, that they, you know, I guess the first round of SPLAS 1, they just looked at the surface, they didn't look at the subroad. You know, what, what I was mentioning is that there are different uh, techniques to evaluate the streets. Right. Uh, when, uh, um, you know, and then the, the different uh, scales for the PCI numbers too. Um, universally, uh, the PCI numbers from zero to 100. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are two ways to do that. Um, the the DeKalb County method is um, 100 is the bad one, the worst one, and zero is the best one. Right. Um, rest of the um, uh, cities do is that zero is the worst one, 100 is the best one. If you look at my table here, um, what I'm saying is once it is paved, PCA after paving is 95 here. Currently it's 26. DeKalb County would be the other way around, but the number would be, current would be probably 80 or something like that. Um, so the techniques, there are two techniques. One is manually done. So an engineer gets up in the morning or inspector, goes and evaluate, basically walking. And there, are, there are multiple factors uh, he'll be looking at and giving a eyeball number. Uh, they could be experts, but that is basically that you know, you're looking at it. Uh, the reason that uh, some of the cities don't do is that it's based on what kind of a mood that person is on that day. Uh, if he comes uh, hungry and then he may give a, a real bad number that day and then become, you know, happy and, uh, you know, um, really cheerful, that number may be high. Because it, it is very difficult for a human to give the same number every time they look at the same thing. Uh, but these machines, um, they call it scanners. Um, it's basically a machine is doing this. So they will run these machines. It's, they're basically scanning. Uh, those consider two factors. Uh, one of them is a surface condition. The other one is a subsurface condition. Right. So the subsurface condition is going to tell you how good or bad the base of the road is, which is very important. Because uh, the, the roads don't fail on the surface. They right. basically start failing Bottom. the subsurface. Mm -hmm. That's how they start sinking. Uh, the, the way it happens is basically the crack forms for first, and then the rainwater gets in. And then, um, you know, if it is a northern uh, part of the country, you have the snow to play with too. So the, you have the sun beating up and the rain beating up, and then the temperature is changing. That's why the cracks happen. And then once it started happening, it, the water gets in and they start failing. Um, that is if the road base was originally built correctly. If the base was not built correctly, uh, we're going to have a situation that is going to fail. Regardless of the temperature, rain, everything is going to start failing. So uh, these scans would uh, you know, give a, uh, a number for the base, and then it will give a number for subsurface condition. Uh, there are multiple subsurface conditions. One is crack. Other one is, I uh, can't remember the term, that the, the white layer forming on that. So it will it'll give a, a ratio of what, you know, the base, it'll give you like 70%. I'm just making up a number. And then for the surface, 30%. So it'll do a, a calculation, and then the finally there will be an average PCI number. And then the average PCA number is given for each section of the road, not for the entire road. Right. So from intersection to intersection is called a section. That will get a number, and that will get a number. So all these numbers are averaged out to be one PCA number for the entire streets. And then all the streets are uh, added, you know, basically number multiplied by the length, and number multiplied by the length divided by the total length will give you the average PCI for a city. And, uh, you know, cities are basically looking at the average PCI, trying to bring it up every year by resurfacing and adding streets. Thank you for that education. Um, with the, can you bring the 22 um, project back up? Um, I know we, we, we won't know the cost of the construction of the sidewalks until we get the design done. And you mentioned that we think, you know, that all three of those Two designs and, and the construction of Evans Mill would be about half a million, you said. But not construction for Browns Mill and not BP4 and BP17. Just design for BP4 and 17 and then construction for BP33. All the design and construction. Design, design, construction. Okay. 
Uh, and then the rest of it, we're still looking at, let's say the rest of it total is another half a million. 30, 50 grand-ish. And I know we're just throwing out numbers. Um, what I'm trying to get to is how much of the 11 million is this? This list. I would say totally the budget. So we got a long way to go. So we need more projects. Hey, get your buddy. Mr. Chair, do you mind? When the revised PCI scores are received, will it be in time and would it be a good idea to revise the list of roads that are getting paved this year? We, not for this year. We, what we, we don't, um, you know, uh, the way it works is that the cities do every five year these evaluations. Once they redo the, uh, the study every five years, that study will set the next five year streets. They will recommend the next five year streets. And then once you do that, uh, even though you will be doing the study at the fourth year, it will be released at the end of the fifth year. Um, you know, the studies are done a year ahead, but still in the five-year interval, you really don't change it. Because if you change it, you know, where do you change it? So we just go through that five-year and start the next year from that study that was done before. Uh, just one quick question and concern, just thinking about it. So if the surface road, it's almost like a Band-Aid, I guess if the surface road wasn't repaired and you put new, I mean, if the sub-road wasn't, if there was a problem with the sub-road and it was paved on the surface road, would that be an issue down the, down, the, down the road? It would, right? I'm not, I'm not following your question. Sub-road was, sub-road was surface. Yes. Okay. Yes. You you said sub base. Not when I mean, you said sub road. Uh, sub, yeah, sub base. Yes. Sub base, yeah. Yes. So um, it, it, correct. So you have to fix the base. If there is a base failure, if you try to pave it over without fixing the fixing the um, the base, the road is going to fail. Uh, unfortunately, it, it may have happened to us um, on Canada Road certain sections. Uh, that that's what happened. So it is resurfaced, looking nice from the top, but the base was not taken care of. So uh, what we have done in this year's bid is that we have built in quantity for patching. So what we will do is we will go and mill the top inch and a half of street. And then, you know, the, the, the hard holes we have now on the streets, uh, those, are not, those are the small areas you're looking at. Once you mill that inch and a half, those potholes will be much larger than what we see from the surface. So you basically go and square or rectangular cut that area. So you'll be cutting a little more than that and patch that area with the, with the coarser material, not the finer material that's going to go on the top, and then come and resurface. So that, that's why we need to have ice on these uh, streets. Every time there's a contractor working on it, we want to have our representative who has the best interest of the city uh, watching them um, every day, so that uh, particularly once it is milled, opened up, we want to put our eyes and identify those areas and making sure those are patched before we go and put the top surface. Harry, I'm, that's a good. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the so let me let me step back for just a second. So we're estimating that the 2022 SWAS um, project recommendation for the rest of this year is going to be about 1.5. So we know we've got about 11 million to go, or 10. Um, and we may not find projects to to consume that 10 million in the rest of this year. We got what six million? I mean six months. Um, we, we very well may. I mean, you may open the transportation master plan and go, here's 10 million easy, right? Um, is it possible but, uh, between, I guess, now and the work session in July that the SPLOS committee meet again and look back at some projects that are on the transportation master plan list and come up with a few more? That could um, consume some of that. Yes. So we will 
you know, there is a the additional probably half a million dollars worth of projects buried into this. Uh, the Panola Road study, we have a, a hundred thousand plus contribution to to this project, and then once the freight cluster study, um, um, the, the notice of proceed come from ARC, there will be a, another hundred plus thousand dollars that we have to spend on this study, and also um, these are ready. These master plans are ready. And then once it is released, we will be spending some money on these two, uh, the master plan, sorry, these two master plans, and then this bicycle pedestrian trail plan, and that that is going to cost us uh, money also. So even though uh, we are recommending the construction projects here, we have some study money involved in these things. Then uh, we, we can uh, put some numbers for all these, and uh, for the next uh, SPLAST meeting, we can bring these plus some additional projects for 2023. Madam Mayor, are you asking that uh, we bring some recommendations back to you and the council on the first, on the work session on the 11th of July? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, let's, let's definitely shoot for that. Um, I imagine the finance team will be looking for budget, uh, 2022 budget uh, amendments in our July or August council meeting. Um, so if we need to make uh, adjustments to the SPLOS budget, we'll need to have narrowed down what those projects are and the cost of it so we can make that those budget adjustments, at least so the finance team can look at what the recommendation is and build it into the amended 22 budget. Well, what I would do, then I will look at, uh, I will speak with the city clerk to see if the 30th is available for us, which is a week from tomorrow and uh, talk also with the committee members and see if they're available so we can have a meeting and then get that information to you by the 11th so we can move forward on it. We'll follow up with the finance director and um, see what is the drop dead deadline for her to have it, to have the projects and give her team enough time to work the numbers into a budget amendment. And if that is not convenient, maybe the following week after, I don't want to do it near the holiday, but if we need to do it by the 7th or 6th or 7th, We'll look at it at that time, too. And she, she may come back and say, let's move the amendments to August. Um, I think the goal is to do it in July. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just wait to hear from you in reference to that, someone from our office. I'll ask her for what's the drop-dead deadline. Yes. And then we'll circle back. We'll go from that. And kind of plan backwards. Right. Um, so 2023. Um, yes. Project. Yes. In preparation for the 23 budget. Um, so get past 22, but then immediately jump to 23. Um, as we try to prepare for the 23 budget, we'll need the capital projects cost for 23. Um, so just kind of consider that there's um, almost $7 million coming in for 23. On top of the $7 million that's still to come in this year, plus the roughly or five, you said it was going to be about 11 out of that 15 for repaving. So we have four or five. Let's after repaving, we'll have about four million in the SPLOS um, account now, and then another seven million ish for 22 SPLOS deposit, and then another seven for 23. Now, let me just remind us that. It was never our intent to only pay once we collected SPLOTS funding. We were supposed to have bonded this money uh, to the tune of uh, nearly $20,000 to get these projects started well in advance and not wait till the funds came in. So uh, to say that we only um, in a position to spend it as it comes in might not be quite accurate. Uh, there are some transportation projects that we simply just haven't gotten to because we did not plan. Uh, we didn't plan. And uh, we didn't take advantage of our opportunity to bond this, uh, these projects and get them off the ground. So uh, what I'm saying is that we need to take a look at the projects that need to be done, period. And they will probably exceed the funds that we currently have or will have uh, to the end of this SPLOS period. And uh, we need to start planning for the uh, the next loss period, but uh, to just 
plan on using them, using it as the funds come in, I think we're handicapping ourselves. Because technically, we could have had all of our paving done in the first year or two if we had bonded it out and done it that way. Uh, but the transportation master plan already addressed uh, some signaling, some um, street widening, sidewalks, and other projects that are far in excess of any splots that we will collect in splots one. So uh, I think the projects are there. We just need to identify them and move on with it so that we have, now that we have someone in place to help us manage it. And I think that's been a big holdup. So I'm saying let us not hold uh, back because inflation is going to be our enemy if we keep holding back. Absolutely. So to your point, we did in our FY22, in the city council's FY22 priorities for this year, one of those priorities is for the finance team to look into um, bonding out the rest of, um, bonding out SPLOST, um projects. So that is on the list. And that is, I mean, I know that's something that the finance team is, has on their list of things to accomplish before the year is out. So that's most certainly has not been taken off the table. So this is, the budget amendment request is not to insinuate that we're only going to spend it as it comes in. It is to try to spend down what we have now, um, but also allow the finance team time to bond out the rest of SPA so that we can repave uh, many more streets per year, which will help get the average score up quicker. Um, so that's, that's an extensive conversation we most certainly had in our budget. Um, conversations last October through November, but it is on the list. It is in the priorities. Uh, and so we need to do both. We need to do all that simultaneously. Uh, Mayor Pablo, I just wanted to say something because I'm looking at the um, financials for uh, the current financials for May. And because the Department of Revenue, we get the deposit every month, correct? You're talking about for SPLOS? That's for SPLOS. Yep. So we've received thus far it's 3.9 million of this 8 point million that we get on the annual annual basis. So we received, because I know I heard you guys said something about getting seven million more this year. We've already received three point nine million in the Department of Revenue deposit in twenty two. Twenty two. Mm -hmm. I just did a total uh, at, um, adding the monthly deposits up, but the bond is sounds good too. You know, getting deposits done as well. We'll, we'll run that by the um, finance director and make sure that what you see in deposits are for 22 and not 21. If I'm not mistaken, don't we get our we get our spots money at the end of each year. And monthly, I know, but it's, it's monthly but it's for the monthly. prior for the prior year. We'll double check. So you're awarded the so the the tax money is collected and then it's distributed. So they're not collecting the the SPLOS penny each month and then giving you that SPLOS penny for that year. I don't, well, we'll double check with the finance director, but I do not. I think I think it's for the prior year. We get, we get a monthly. I believe we get a monthly. Yes, from the we most certainly get a deposit monthly. What I what I want to double check with the finance director is that the deposit monthly is for the same fiscal year, for the same tax oh, year. Okay. So I'm not saying that we don't get it monthly. I'm saying that the monthly deposits that we get maybe for the prior year's tax collection. I believe that we started getting monthly deposits in the first year of SPLOS. We will most certainly let the finance director tell us um, how that tax collection comes in. Um, but as, uh, today, uh, she is stating that we are still to receive another $7 million in SPLOS for this year. which would be fantastic if we get seven million on top of the three mm. that we've already gotten, which is totally possible as well. Um, I'm, I'm just not familiar with the way, I know how the tax um, office, the tax commissioner's office receives the penny, 
what I'm not certain is, is if it's accounted for in the same fiscal year as collected, or is it distributed the next fiscal year from the year it was, the year before it was collected? But she'll most certainly tell us. Okay, so we, we have marching orders for FY22 capital project amendment. And then 23, we'll immediately look at 23. And most certainly we'll know uh, by the end of the year what the bond opportunity looks like that will either dictate 23 to expand itself ex exponentially um, if we do get the bonds for 23, or we'll know if the bonds will apply to 24. We should know that by the end of the year. What time did we say we were going to end the meeting? Was it at 8 or 8.30? Oh, 8.30, okay. <laughs> and this, I know this meeting is at a different time than our finance committee meeting, so I was confused. We usually start at 7. Uh, so the 22, someone jumped back, Chairman, to 22 um, budget amendments to come. So my note from the finance director was to, and she's apologized for her absence. She had a family matter that came up at the last minute. So I'm going to do my best to relay her notes uh, in, in my translation of them, which pray they are correct. Um, so we talked about the, the balance in the SPLOS budget for 22 that we needed to look at and see if we can um, spend down some. Um, some other larger mid-year adjustments that she anticipates we'll need to make um, are to accommodate for the personnel changes uh, that we've already had and then some to come. Um, so we've had some additional personnel requests come to the city council between the first six months of this year. Um, so the budget will need to be adjusted to reflect um, the salary lines for those folks. And then also the department heads are being asked to evaluate future personnel needs um, that we could accomplish before the year is out. Um, so the recruitment efforts, those that have existed in the first six months and those that um, we anticipate to come in the last six months would be a budget adjust, a big budget adjustment for the mid-year review. Um, she wanted me to also note that those budget, those salaries, um, will be able to be sustained through the general fund um, due to an increase in business licenses, franchise fees, and our insurance premiums. So those are the largest three revenue streams for the city, franchise fees, business licenses, and you can include building permits as well, so licenses and permits, and insurance premiums. Also, we, we've talked about the finance team doing an extensive revenue recovery effort for the first six months of this year. So between that and the increase in the, in the largest three revenue streams, she foresees no challenges with us, with us being able to um, sustain the increase in personnel. Um, also, one of the other larger adjustments, also one of the largest adjustments for this um, mid-year budget review is to um, add the 90-day extension adjustment for the Jacobs Engineering contract. So the first extension was added to the budget. The second one was not um, prior to we passed the budget, what, November? Um, so the first, budget, the first Jacobs extension was included. The second extension was not. So that second extension is going to be funded uh, for in the, or adjusted rather, in the mid-year budget review. Um, another contributing factor that I didn't mention to being able to sustain the salary increase is fully coming off of the Jacobs engineering contract. We'll see quite a bit of savings coming from that as well. So again, no need. she didn't feel it necessary to worry about us being able to sustain the personnel increases between the increase in the largest three revenue streams, the revenue, the revenue recovery efforts, and being completely um, finished with the Jacobs contract. We shouldn't have any problems there. Um, so short of what is to come of the SPLOS recommendations for the rest of the year, we don't foresee any 
true challenges in the budget amendments for 22. Any questions? Um, for the vacant position in FY22, did we not budget for those vacant positions at 100%? Because yes. it sounds like we're, we're yeah. either increasing the salaries or adding headcount. We're adding headcount. So the, the vacant positions that exist today were funded already. So the addition, uh, so the addition to uh, the personnel would be going forward. So for the next six months, but also in between from January to June, there were additional positions added outside of the vacant ones that were already accounted for. So some of those three sets of positions, the ones that were already accounted for that were coming over from the Jacobs contract to the city. In addition to those, there were more that were added to the budget, and then there are still more to come to finish out the year. Anyone else? Samarcus? Looking at the May financial report, I don't get where those numbers are supported. General property tax is down by about 280,000 year to date compared to last year. Franchise fees are down about 140. Uh, business taxes are way, way up, but I'm not sure if that's entirely an accurate statement because it shows zero for what was approved in the budget for FY22, but it shows a million three collected compared to minus 2,000 last year. I'm kind of thinking that might be a, a misprint between columns. And then in licenses and fees, we're down 600,000. This is year to date, end of May, compared to year to date, end of May last year. We're down about 600,000 in total business license and about 700,000 in total licenses and permits. So you're comparing 22, 21 actuals to 22. He's comparing 22 actual to projected. Given that this financial report does not include the projected numbers as the, of the end of May, what else is there to, to compare it to looking at the financial report? Only understand. I'm not. I look forward to a I'm report with another column on it. Um, but most certainly, um, she has delivered the message uh, that as she looks at the numbers for what's been collected for 22 and what's projected throughout the rest of the year, um, that will be just fine. So we will most certainly give her an opportunity to, to answer your questions directly based on what she's projecting for revenue. Um, but I can't answer that for you right now. To quote Councilperson Grimes, trust but verify. Absolutely. And she is up to the task for sure. Any other questions, comments? One thing I remember from um, the past, um, was it when we just had a work session? What do we have? We had a work session in June. Um, Ms. Scruggs made the May financial presentation in the work session. Um, and she mentioned uh, that there was some revenue still to be booked and it was uh, somewhere between five and six million that was still to be booked. Um, we received some franchise fees um, that came in much later than they should have um, to the tune of about five million ish, five to six million. So there's still some revenue to be booked. Um, so this is May year to date, um, but it is not December. So that may have a lot to do with uh, her level of comfortability in revenue uh, still to come and projected for the rest of the year. But I do remember that stood out to me in her presentation was there was still five, six million-ish to be booked in revenue. Any further questions or comments? So when we had, when we add headcount, what kind of evaluation is done to justify the addition of that position? Because I would think that if you had a department, you would say, I need 10 people to run this department, a director, an assistant, somebody to pick up the trash, et cetera. 
and then that is set and budgeted for. So as you're adding positions to the charter or, or the total city headcount, what kind of justification goes into to that evaluation? Um, that's a great question for our city manager. <laughs> um, that we are not a part of that process. And we are a part of, they make the presentation and the plea to the city council. And we, we look at the justifications. Um, so that will come to us when they make the budget recommendations to add um, the positions. They will justify why, they, why they're asking for them and then where the money will come from. And then the council will decide whether or not those justifications you know, make good sense for us. Um, so in the past, when, when they have requested to add positions, um, it does come with a full justification. S some of this is still uh, transition worthy. It is, we, the third party company decided what we needed to run. And so that's what they provided to us. As we transition away from that third party company, we are evaluating what is truly needed for us to be able to run the department and deliver the service in the way that we uh, desire to do so. So the first part of the transition was most certainly to bring folks over to keep the ship running. The second and third phase of that is to evaluate how many more people are needed to deliver the service at the quality that we want, not necessarily just because those positions were given to us, but what do we truly need? As we are still um, in the last what, two weeks of that transition, um, some of those department heads are still coming on board. So we anticipate when they come on board that they will, one of their first tasks will be to look at that department and decide what positions are needed to best serve our community. So some of it um, is just ev being time going by to evaluate demand um, and then being able to come back and say, okay, you know, it's been three months and we've only operated, let's say, with two clerks and we need a third to be able to keep up with uh, the committee meetings, the minutes. Um, as we add more committees um, to our committee list that requires staff to be available to attend to those or require staff to be able to take those minutes. Um, so we, she evaluates the load um, and then how we want to best deliver that service. So I anticipate that between the second and third round that um, we should probably have it pretty much nailed down. Um, but then you, as you can imagine, once we get stable, then we'll be looking for growth and expansion. How do we deliver more service? Uh, how do we make our services more efficient and effective? So it could be very much so an ongoing analysis of our needs. I don't anticipate such a huge uh, jump each year from you know, 20 employees to 40 <laughs> each year, um, but I do believe it'll be an ongoing assessment, especially as the city council sets priorities to expand services or deliver services um, in a different manner. It could require uh, more support. Thank you for your report, Madam Mayor, uh, and thank you committee members for your questions, concerns, and your presence. Uh, are there any other comments before I uh, call for adjournment? Well, thank you, Starlet. Thank you, Frida. Thank you for all the uh, technical assistance you guys have provided for us. Uh, the floor is now open for adjournment. Can I get a motion? It has been moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor will signify by saying aye. All those opposed will signify by saying nay. Would you, Madam Deputy City Clerk? Councilman Rob Turner. Aye. Councilwoman Tammy Grimes. Mary Karakarant. I'm sorry. Elijah Ajayi. Aye. Donna Priest Brown. Aye. Daryl Taylor. Mayor Cobble. I do not vote. Dave Marcus. Aye. Michael Strong, Nadia Farnham, aye, and Lakeisha Swanson, aye. Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>